Hey guys, it's Chris. I come again with a new tutorial. This time we will play with some addressable RGB LEDs using the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's get started. This is not the first time I designed a board for RP2040 MCU because I already tried this microcontroller for the LED cube that I built early this year. You can watch the full making video through the link in the description down below. Since dealing with the QFN part package of RP2040 is a bit delicate for many users, then I choose the Raspberry Pi Pico for today's gadget. This is the breakout development board built around RP2040. We will make some addressable LEDs run through the code that we will create using Arduino IDE and upload it later to the Pico board. So this project is a combination between both parties, the Arduino and Raspberry Pi products. I used these WS LED series of the 4020 package in one of my old projects. Since I managed to create a flat circular shape using these LEDs, then the 4020 package is suitable for this project compared it to the 5050 LED package. Those LEDs have an addressable register of reference WS28 that takes the RGB color code through the data input pin and transfer the RGB color code for the next LED pixel to the data output pin. Nothing to promote about this digital microscope camera, but I'm showing it because I filmed many video sequences through its lens and I find it suitable for assembly. As always, we start with the circuit schematic, basically only two parts to deal with in this project, the LEDs and the decoupling capacitors. Considering the LED datasheet, we need to place a decoupling capacitor for the power line of each LED pixel. But it's okay to go for one decoupling capacitor per two LEDs, as long as we keep a short trace length of the power lines from one LED pixel to another. All in all, I will use 24 LED pixels and 20 decoupling capacitors. I also use two header connectors of 20 pins each to connect the Pico board to the designed circuit through the Pico castellated edge pins, which will make a flat shape of the assembled module. I searched the needed components from Octopart, there you can find the necessary electronic parts needed for your project and download their CAD files to upload them easily to Atom Designer. I connected the LED pixels in series and placed the decoupling capacitors and I used a small size of 0603 package for the capacitors to keep a small size of the host board. The first LED will receive the pixels RGB parameters through the GP9 of Pico. I then created the PCB design and I measured the exact spacing value between both header connectors to match the Pico edge pins and set them as bottom layer components. Then I placed the LEDs to create this flat round shape by playing with the LEDs and capacitors rotation angle that you can modify through the components properties. All what we need now is a cool name to this host board. I called it Pico Pixa to match the Pico board and the addressable pixels. After getting the PCB design ready, I then moved to JLC PCB to order my design. Five days later, the blue box come to my desktop and here is how it looks the produced boards. I managed to assemble these components by hand using the solder iron. Sounds a bit challenging for the small size of the capacitors, but it's a handy task as long as I use a pointy end solder tip small cross-section solder wire, and precision tweezers. It's also necessary to use the appropriate tool set for rework, like flux and the solder wick. After getting all the pixels properly assembled, I move it to the top side to solder the Pico board to the hose through the castellated edge pins. And this is my very first time assembly of such pins and I find it so handy and cleverly designed headers. <music> a 
and then our board is ready to receive the Arduino code. I used this Pixel Connect library to create this program where I developed some light animations for the pixels and then I uploaded it to Pico. The final step is designing a cool housing to the circuit and then 3D print it in PLA filament. Then I used these 3 mm inserts to assemble the board in its housing. I plugged the USB cable to the Pico board and here he is shining. This project design brought me a useful project idea that will be revealed in the next video so stay tuned. That's it for today guys, do not miss to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more electronics videos. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day, it was Chris. See you next time.